Rockwell International and Wabco, world leaders in foundation brakes and anti-lock braking systems, joined forces several years ago to form Rockwell Wabco Vehicle Control Systems. Among other fine accomplishments, the company produces the best-selling heavy-duty truck anti-lock braking system in North America. Whatever type of rig you drive, whatever the conditions, the Rockwell Wabco anti-lock braking system helps stop your vehicle safely and efficiently. It improves vehicle control in all driving and road conditions. It shortens stopping distances, especially in emergencies, reduces jackknifing, reduces tire wear and flat spots, and is backed by one of the industry's strongest warranties, three years or 300,000 miles. Now, emergency stopping situations require excellent driver skill and superior braking capability. When control is vital, it's important to know you're riding with the best. We created this video to help you understand the major components of the Rockwell Wabco Anti-Lock Braking System, or ABS, and how to diagnose and troubleshoot it. We will explain their functions, built-in performance features, and the immediate steps technicians can take to diagnose and fix any problems, usually right on the spot in just minutes. For the next several hours, Dan and I want to take Whoa, 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 hold on there, Tom. That's minutes, not hours. For the next several minutes. These folks have other things to do, you know? <laughs> right, Dan. Okay, minutes. For the next several minutes, Dan and I want to take you on a visual tour of the Rockwell Webco ABS, including an overview of the system, system components, where they're located, what they do, and how to tell if repairs are needed, and built-in self-checking capabilities and procedures. We'll begin by looking at the major components of the Rockwell Wabco ABS. To help explain the technical data, let's go to Dan Miles in our garage. Dan, can you hear me okay? Oh, yes, Tom, I can. Just fine. You're coming through loud and clear. Great. Dan, we've got a group of people here that would like to know a little more about keeping their ABS in top condition. Do you have any suggestions for us? Oh, I sure do. Starting with the system's major components. Well, Dan, why don't you get started and I'll watch for questions from the audience. Okay. The Rockwell Wabco ABS was designed for easy maintenance. Wheel-mounted sensors monitor wheel speed and send that information to an electronic control unit mounted either on the tractor chassis or in the cab. The ECU evaluates the sensor readings from the wheels, and if a wheel starts to lock, the ECU sends signals to modulator valves which automatically apply and release air chamber pressure up to three times per second. Just a minute, Dan. Wouldn't I get the same result by just pumping the brakes? No, I don't think so, Tom. For starters, in the time it took you to ask that question, you would have had to pump your brakes, oh, 20 times for the precise amount of pressure that the modulator valve applies. And remember, not all wheels lock simultaneously. ABS works only when wheels begin to lock. Under normal operating conditions, ABS is in a standby mode while the standard air brake system controls braking. The major components of ABS include tooth wheels and speed sensors, the electronic control unit, modulator valves, warning lamps, and other cables to connect the components. A tooth wheel is mounted to a machined surface on the hub of each monitored wheel. A sensor is installed with its end touching the tooth wheel. Movement of the tooth wheel past the sensor indicates wheel speed and that information is sent to the electronic control unit for processing. The ECU is the brain of the ABS. It continuously processes wheel speed, analyzing whether ABS activation is required and monitors the overall condition of the system. I'll tell you more about monitoring the system in a couple of minutes. Modulator valves control the air pressure to each brake. When the ECU detects the need for a more controlled response, the ABS modulator valve adjusts air pressure to the brake chambers, only at the affected wheel, to avoid wheel lock. A warning lamp is installed in the dash, or the instrument panel of the vehicle. After reaching a speed of approximately four miles per hour, the Rockwell Wabco ABS performs a self-check. The warning lamp goes out and remains out after the self-check is complete. If the warning lamp remains on after reaching a speed of approximately four miles per hour, a fault exists. 
I'll explain checking the system in just a few minutes. Finally, cables connect the sensors and valves to the ECU. Well, that's the ABS overview. Tom, are there any questions in the audience? I'm not sure. They all appear to be resting. Uh, but I have a question. What happens when the ECU is not working? For whatever reason. Let's say my warning lamp goes on and stays on. No brakes, right? Not at all. Your normal braking system capability is not compromised by ABS. The ABS is only activated in extreme stopping circumstances. If for some reason an ABS fault occurs while you're in transit, standard braking capabilities are still intact. How so? Well, if one of the wheel sensors or valves is damaged, the ECU analyzes data from other sensors to make adjustments while maintaining maximum braking capability at all times. Incredible. That means you finally got the brake that you've been looking for. So what if something's not working right and you're on the road? It's dark and it's raining. Okay, foggy too. The ABS warning lamp is on. Problems, right? Now wait a minute, Tom. Many times a loose connection is likely the cause of the problem. The good news is that with the Rockwell Wabco ABS, our built-in Blink Code self-diagnostic capability will immediately recognize the problem and pinpoint repairs that are needed. Show the people what I mean, Tom. Now, in this truck, Dan is referring to this light on the dash panel. Check with the OEM to determine your lamp's location. When a fault occurs in the ABS, the warning lamp will indicate a problem exists. The fault is stored in the ECU and will remain there until manually erased. Located on the dash panel is a lamp that, when activated, tells you the nature of the ABS fault. Dan, would you mind showing these folks what I mean? Sure, Tom. When activated, the lamp will produce a sequence of flashes to identify the fault. If more than one fault has been detected, each fault will be stored in the ECU memory. To check the blink codes, first supply power to the ECU by turning the ignition to the on position, then activate the diagnostic switch. The blink code lamp will come on and remain on after about five seconds. When the lamp goes out, after a short pause, the code will begin flashing. Blink codes consist of three digits. The first digit indicates the type of system installed in the vehicle. The second and third digits indicate the fault code. Each set of digits is separated by a two and a half second pause, during which time the lamp is out. The code will repeat until the fault is corrected and the code erased. Let's demonstrate again how the system works. Number one, the ignition switch is on. Number two, the test switch is on. Number three, the blink code lamp comes on after about five seconds. Number four, the lamp goes out for two and a half seconds and the code will begin flashing momentarily. Number five, the lamp begins flashing to indicate the first digit of the code. In this case, two flashes, and it goes off again. Number six, two and a half seconds elapse, and the lamp begins flashing a second digit. Six flashes, and the lamp goes off. Number seven, the lamp comes on to indicate the third digit. Eleven flashes. and the lamp goes off. In this example, our blink code is 2611. To interpret the code, refer to maintenance manual number 28, anti-lock brake systems for trucks, tractors, and buses. The blink codes are listed in section three. The codes are also contained in pocket guide TP94157. But for our example, it is code 2611, and it indicates fault. There is a sensor circuit failure on the steering axle and corrective action, check the sensor, the sensor cable, and cable connections. The code will be repeated until the correction is made or until the ignition is turned off. However, if no correction is made and the fault still exists, it will continue to be stored in the ECU memory. After the correction is made, the fault data can be erased from the ECU. Tom, would you take over from here? Sure, Dan. Now, there are two types of faults stored in the ECU's memory. An intermittent fault identifies a failure that did occur, but may not exist at the present time. Examples include faults that only occur when the vehicle is in motion, like a sensor out of adjustment. Check the system. 
These faults can be erased from the ECU immediately, although you should check to make sure the repair has actually been made. It's also a good idea to note these intermittent faults for your records. Now the other type of fault is called an existing fault. These faults must be corrected before they can be erased from the ECU's memory. Depending on your system, when the blink code lamp is flashing, to erase a fault, turn the blink code switch off. Wait until the lamp stops flashing and then turn the ignition off. Then, turn the ignition switch back on. If the same blink code shows again, the fault has not been corrected and the code has not been erased. If a new code appears, the previous fault no longer exists and the code has been erased, but you have another fault to check. Since the ECU can store several different faults, you will want to check for other faults by repeating the blink code diagnostic procedure and performing any needed repairs. When all the faults have been erased from the ECU memory, or if there are no faults stored on the system, the blink lamp or warning lamp will indicate one long flash then the system identifying digit, which in our example is two flashes. This pattern will continue until the blink code switch is turned off. Although it looks pretty involved, going through the procedure once or twice and referring to the maintenance manual usually answers any questions. As a suggestion, at routine service, be sure to check your system and record any faults. Oh, and don't forget to pass along our 800 number. If they have any questions or need assistance with the Rockwell Wabco ABS, Help is just a phone call away. Right, Dan. I'll do that right now. The number to call for help with your system is 1-800-535-5560. Our Rockwell District Service Manager is available to answer any of your questions. Sure. Well, we've covered a lot of ground in the last few minutes. The major components of the Rockwell Wabco Anti-Lock Braking System were identified and their functions described. We spoke of tooth wheels and speed sensors. The electronic control unit, or ECU, ABS modulator valves, and ABS warning lamps. Then, we reviewed the self-checking features of the system, including activating the ECU, identifying the blink codes, interpreting the codes, and taking any needed corrective action, using the maintenance manual to help diagnose problems, and erasing faults from the ECU memory. Now, on behalf of Dan and everyone at Rockwell Wabco Vehicle Control Systems, thanks for joining us for this anti-lock braking system technical orientation. And don't hesitate to call us at 1-800-535-5560 for help with any of your driving or ABS needs. Safe and happy motoring from Rockwell Wabco. With the Kentmore ProLink 9000 Diagnostic Tool, keeping your Rockwell Webco ABS system running smoothly is easier than ever before. The ProLink 9000 provides more comprehensive testing capabilities than any other tool on the market today. It takes only a few minutes to check all your ABS components. Now that's important, because you want to check your ABS after repairs have been made. ABS warning lamps will indicate if your ABS requires attention. The warning lamp for truck, tractor, or bus ABS comes on each time you turn on your ignition and goes off when you reach approximately 4 miles per hour. For trailer ABS, the trailer warning lamp flashes briefly when you break a trailer that's moving. This is part of Rockwell Wabco's self-check procedure. However, during braking, if a warning lamp comes on and stays on, take your vehicle in for service. Although there is a complete manual with step-by-step -step instructions for using the ProLink 9000, I'd like to take a couple of minutes to show you the primary features. You will need the ProLink 9000 keypad, the Rockwell Wabco cartridge, and a six-pin Deutsch connector. Upgrades are available for older cartridges. Before you start, be sure to follow these basic safety rules. Always wear safe eye protection when performing maintenance or service. Chalk the vehicle and apply the parking brake. Never work under a vehicle supported only by jacks. Jacks can slip or fall over and cause serious personal injury. Make sure the ignition power is off before beginning the process. Now you're ready to check the system. With the vehicle ignition off, connect the Kentmore ProLink 9000 to the six-pin Deutsch connector. 
As you can see, it's very easy to connect the ProLink tool to the diagnostic connector. Turn the ignition on. If the ProLink does not power up, make sure to check connections. Check that the cartridge is plugged into the ProLink keypad correctly. Check for proper wiring in the diagnostic connector. Look for 12 volt DC power and ground. And check for a blown fuse. After the ProLink powers up, you'll briefly see these screens. If the no data received message is displayed, make sure to check the ignition switch. It must be on to provide power to the ECU. The voltage should be greater than 11 volts. The blink code switch. It must be off. Data link connections. It could be faulty SAE J1587 data link connections or wiring from the diagnostic connector to the ECU. Fuses. A fuse may be blown. The first line on the first screen to appear indicates what the ProLink is set up to test. If the first screen does not match the system you are testing, go to the system setup screen and make the appropriate selection. For example, 4S, 4M, 6S, 4M, etc. After verifying the setup, begin your diagnostics with the existing and stored faults. This is the first screen displayed. If you had to go to the system setup screen to change your system configuration, enter the function key to return to the first screen. These should be investigated and, if necessary, repaired and cleared before proceeding with the system check. If there are any faults, the ProLink 9000 will walk you through a description of each fault. For tractor, truck, or bus ABS, refer to Rockwell Wabco Maintenance Manual number 28. For Easy Stop Trailer ABS, refer to Maintenance Manual number 33. Be sure to turn the ignition off when making the repairs. When all faults have been investigated and or repaired, the ProLink 9000 offers the option of continuing to check all of the ABS components, including vehicle voltage, ABS and ATC valves, ABS ATC lamps, sensors, engine data link, retarder relay, retarder data link, and the ABS ATC switches. It's easy to perform these checks. Just use the function and arrow keys and follow the on-screen instructions. In addition, the ProLink 9000 has a serial port that allows you to connect the ProLink to a printer or to other appropriate electronic equipment. When you've completed the system check, simply turn the ignition off, disconnect the ProLink 9000, and you're ready to roll. Thank you for your interest in Kent Moore's ProLink 9000. For more information about the ProLink 9000 and all your Rockwell Wabco system diagnostic tools, please call Kent Moore Technical Service at 1-800-328-6657.